Hello, I'm Robert. This is Trina Maduro and my hey, sweetheart, Kim. Kim. Hello, welcome. And we're talking to you about what's called the business of the 21st century. Very important subject, especially for those of you out there who really don't like your work, are not making enough money, and are looking for a challenge. So we're talking about a subject that some, a lot of people misunderstand. It's called network marketing. And I've personally never been in network marketing, but my friend Donald Trump, you know, he and I wrote the book, Why We Want You To Be Rich. Why do we want you to be rich? It's simply because if you're not rich, you're poor and middle class. I mean, the number of poor is increasing and middle class is decreasing. So that's why we want you to be rich. And we also wrote Midas Touch. And Donald and I are about the only two guys out there that are recommending network marketing, although we've not been in it. So my sweetheart Kim has been in network marketing and Trina's been in network marketing. So we're going to be talking to you about that. And so I ask you to keep an open mind, especially if you think it's something you never would do and all this, because there's a lot of benefits to it. And today we'll be talking about the benefits other than just money. There's a tremendous benefit to being a network marketing business. So let's start with Kim real first. How, how did you get into network marketing? I got into network marketing because I was fired from my first job out of college. <laughs> I was looking for something to do. Um, yes, I uh, and and actually, I was fired because I really wanted to learn business, and my boss wanted me to learn a job. So I didn't want to learn a job. I wanted to learn the business I was Say in advertising. That again. Say that again. I but wanted to learn business, and I didn't want to learn a job. So. While she wants me at my desk at her beck and call, I was working in the sales department, in the production department, in the art department, learning the business of advertising. So she fired me. But I still wanted, I still had this kind of this entrepreneurial bent, and so I discovered network marketing. This, this woman I met said, hey, there's, there's this company, and you can be a sales rep, and um, you can make a lot of money. And I'm like, okay, tell me all about it. So I became um, a network marketer. And this was, I was about 22, 23 years old. And I learned a ton. And the, one of the biggest things that I learned was selling. Because at that point in this company, it, a lot of it was about sales. And so here's what I would do. Because I had a lot of free time on my hands, <laughs> I worked out at this fitness club. I had a membership 24, or I, had a, I had a membership at a, a fitness club. So I spent a lot of time at this fitness club working out because I could be in control of that since right now I wasn't in control of a job. And then I found this network marketing company, Skincare Products, and I thought, perfect matchup. So I took my little kit and I went to the locker room of the fitness club and I sat down there and I had free facials and I'd give people samples and they'd order from me and it was a perfect environment because they were in there changing their clothes, they had a little bit of time, I could talk to them, I could give them free stuff. Um, and it was working really well until I found out I was somebody's competition and there was apparently a store right above the gym. They had a lease. They didn't want me there selling skincare products because they sold skincare products. I'm like, no problem. There's another fitness club about 20 minutes away. So I took the bus and every day I'd go on the bus and I'd go to this other fitness club, set up my little shop and sell my products and give them free facials. And I learned about selling. I, I was an entrepreneur yeah. and I was learning how to sell and I had to learn when people said, no, no, I don't want it. I had to figure out how do you, what do you say to have them keep the conversation going. And, and it was really, it was a great, great, great experience. So then Trina, how'd you get into network marketing? Well, my story started in Kansas City, Missouri. I was fresh out of graduate school. Yeah, you, you have a, one of those really affluent degrees, right? <laughs> Social work. Social work. Very affluent. <laughs> Well, I'm a, a big C3, heart. You have a big heart. I'm a so wasn't it like a master's or something? I have a master's degree in social work. Yeah. So I'm, a, I'm a big bleeding heart. <laughs> and uh, how much student loan debt did you have? Fifty thousand dollars plus, which was more than my salary. Way more than my salary. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, I was at a gas station in Kansas City, and I was fresh out of graduate school, and I got approached by a man who was excited about this company. And he scared me because, you know, I'm from the hood, so I thought that, you know, it wasn't going to be a good interaction. <laughs> and he said, oh, my gosh, you have such a great attitude. I can just tell from a distance. I would love for you to come to a meeting that I'm putting on. Again, this is my first ever exposure to anything to do with network marketing. And so I didn't know this guy. He was a stranger. I took his card. I turned him down. I never showed up. A couple of months later, a group of uh, African-Americans approached me at Walmart. 
and told me about another company in the industry of telecommunications. They said, oh man, you'll be great in this, in this industry and in this business network marketing. For some reason, you know, I always carry a, a smile on my face and I'm always cordial and nice. So I must have made eye contact with this group of, of young entrepreneurs. And next thing you know, I was signing up for a telecommunication company. I was at Walmart signing up people for long distance. We we're signing up from like 8 p.m. to midnight after work. And then one thing led to another. I became a field coordinator in this in this company after three years. And I was well on my way to a, a whole new business. So for me, the biggest, I would say, obstacle was overcoming the rejection. And so immediately they put me out there and I had to go through a ton mm -hmm. of no's. Mm -hmm. And I was just getting beat up out there. It's invaluable, isn't it? It, it was invaluable. That's priceless. And then we would come back to the house and we would talk about it and we would debrief about it. And, and my upline and my mentor always asked me, how did that make you feel? Okay, we're going to go back and do it again tomorrow night. And that's the part about what really works with network marketing versus traditional corporate work. It's like everybody's your coach. Mm -hmm. you know, everybody wants you to make it. That's right. Whereas in corporate America, they don't want you to make it because you mm -hmm. might take their job. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, so when people say network marketing is like Ponzi or a pyramid scheme, they don't know what they're talking about. Corporate America is a pyramid scheme. It goes like this, and only one person can make the top. But in network marketing, it's like this. Mm -hmm. The only way you get rich is you got to bring other people up, right? Absolutely. So there's a lot of room at the top, and your job is to go boop, bring people right. up, bring people up, and you coach them into success. And you can come just hang out, they don't fire you, right? Oh, no, not at all. <laughs> not at all. You, you're not in a box. You realize that really the world is at your fingertip. It's up to you. It has to be. It's up to me, is what we always say to one another, because we the support system was amazing because you go out there six days a week you're beat up because you have the status quo mentality out there of everyone who have traditional jobs telling you you're crazy you're not gonna make it you're stupid yeah. you know once you get a real job you know so those voices are still there but they don't have any effect on me whatsoever I am bulletproof but back then you know we needed one another you know like those young people in San Diego need one another to continue to core together and, and, and fight those naysayers. Yeah. But once you get through that and you break through it, the sky is the limit. And so that's why I wrote the book, Business of the 21st Century, because network marketing is the business of the 21st century. It's about cooperation. It's mm -hmm. about being generous. Whereas business of the 20th century, which is corporate America, it's about greed. And it's about being, you know, just hoarding for yourself. If you share, you lose. So we're in a completely new era today, the, the 21st century, and it's time for us to be more generous, not greedy like corporate America. And that's really the transition we're going mm -hmm. through in our, in our world. So before we, Anna, mm -hmm. did you get, you have one of the most interesting stories <laughs> about where you grew up, how you grew up in the ghetto, I guess, right? The ghetto, I mean, yes. stuff, and I've, I've seen the ghetto <coughs> in New York, but I've never lived in the ghetto, mm -hmm. and you have, so I've always, been amazed at how you got out of the ghetto because that's the hard part getting out right that's correct yeah so tell, tell them how you how you were raised well I was literally raised between the bullets of two rival gangs in the city of Chicago on the south side oh, Barack Obama's place Barack Obama that's right <laughs> from Hawaii that's right that's well, right we used to call him a royal Hawaiian <laughs> <laughs> he's African-American but he's royal Hawaiian <laughs> well we're happy to claim him in Chicago but it was 14 siblings in a single parent home your mother had 14 kids she birthed 11, and she raised three of my sister's kids from birth because they were drug babies. Jesus. And um, so we were voted the least likely to succeed family. <laughs> we had the most deplorable home. We were on government cheese, government food, did you live food in a stamps. Or a house? No, we did not live in a high rise, Robert. We lived in a ghetto of Chicago. My sister lived in a 16 story high rise in a Robert Taylor homes, which were the, the ghetto projects. We lived in the community and we would go there every single weekend. So our family was pretty much spread out throughout Chicago and the small ghetto communities as well as the high rise Robert Taylor homes and Caprina Green. And so we, I've had the best of, of both worlds when it comes to being on the east side, being on the west side and the north side. And, and it was all very, very rough. I mean, I, I joke about it today, but I fear for my life every single day. I, I, I went to sleep in fear, I woke up in fear, I went to school in fear, and I was a college basketball player aspiring to be a professional basketball player, and I would play on a playground, and, and it wasn't uncommon for us to sweep up the, the glass and, 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 and clean up the blood from the night before, the violence the night before. 
and um, and play basketball. And so we were living, I grew up in little in the midst of violence. And I still remember as, as an eight year old girl, I had this dream <coughs> of becoming a millionaire. And I had no idea how I was gonna achieve that. I thought it was gonna be becoming a professional basketball player. So I would practice my skills every single day because I knew I was gonna go to the Olympics. They didn't have a professional girls team at the time, but I knew that I was gonna, that was gonna be my meal ticket out of the ghetto. Mm -hmm. And so I did, I, I, I reached a professional status at age 21, obviously. In basketball? In basketball. Really? I did. Got I a full it. ride to the, to the, not the WNBA, they didn't have the WNBA during that time, so I was too early. And so I had to go a different, had to go a different direction. Um, so, Again, my, you know, I, I began to just just um, do what people were telling me to do to, be, to become successful. So I got advanced degrees. So I went back to school to get a master's degree because at that time I was disappointed that the WNBA hadn't birthed yet. And so to me, the next best success step would be to go to graduate school. And so I got another thirty thousand dollars in debt, <laughs> going to graduate school at the University of Kansas. I get, did a one year program. Graduated with honors, and I thought that making an extra ten thousand dollars was the key. And soon after that, I was introduced to network marketing, and the rest is history. But to come from literally, um, so did you make more as network marketing or as social work? Oh my goodness, are you serious? Uh, as a social worker, um, unfortunately, during that time, I was happy. My 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 starting salary was twenty three thousand five hundred with a master's a year. That was with the bachelor. The master's it was thirty five thousand. And so now my network marketing business has surpassed that, absolutely. And now I'm beginning to pay my student loans back for the next 30 years. <laughs> now I think you'll go a lot faster from here. It will, it yeah. will. And when I met Robert, I shared a vision with him at the Boys and Girls Club and that vision, I don't know if you remember this, Robert. I want to, I want to create 20 millionaires over the next 20 years from the ghetto, from the urban area. I wanted to take what I was learning from the Rich Dad Company, from Rich Dad Coaching, and from investing. Everything was the epiphany for me. It was all new ideas and aha moments. And I wanted to go back to my community and help elevate them and pull them out. And so we began this investment club at the Boys and Girls Club. We're still working on it right now, but Robert told me, you yourself have to become a millionaire before you can make others. You need to practice what you preach. And so that's why I went through Rich Dad Coaching, and that's why I'm in there. He goes, it takes five to 10 years to become a millionaire. I'm at year seven. And so I know once I reach that status, I'll be able to pull a lot more um, young youth from the, <clears throat> from the ghetto or from the urban areas to that, to that place. And right now I'm starting a school of entrepreneurship and business at my church as we speak. And they're letting me come in there, let me come into the church and, and to play cash flow with the kids. They bought cash flow games. We have played with, with hundreds of staff and kids already. And right now we're ready to start the school in 2015. So I know that yeah. my dream and my vision is going to be realized. Good for you. Thank Good you. For you. Thank Good you. Good job. I think one of the th what interesting about cash flow, how mm -hmm. we met, was we were playing the playing cash flow in the boys and girls club. <laughs> it's not like normal boys and girls club. Mm -hmm. There is high fence all around. That's correct. Right and there was a, like right a shooting on the steps. And shoot. there was a shooting like on the, the steps. That's correct. And the trainer says, oh, got to watch out for the OGs. I said, OGs? What's an OG? Old gangsters. And those are the guys, they go to jail, but they come out. They, That's they, correct. And they're in network marketing also, right? They're going <laughs> to recruit, recruit new kids to sell drugs. Absolutely. So they the have a sales point. force. Yeah. So they have to put a fence up because mm -hmm. the old gangsters would come by and recruit kids and sell correct. drugs from. That's correct. So here I am, me and my little yuppie outfit and all this, and with caramel little cash flow games in there, I'm like, holy Christ, you know, I mean, we're in the ghetto in Phoenix. But it, that's when it touches your heart. Because yes. I still remember there's this one kid, mm -hmm. he was considered retarded, mm -hmm. he couldn't speak, and all he this. He was in special so, ed. Huh? He was in special ed. Yeah, so other kids, you know, they're just choosing between gangsters or network marketing. That's correct. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm looking at this because I, I said, I know I know what's on, you know, when you're 15, 16 years mm -hmm. old, you know what's in their That's minds. That's right. And they're, they're planning, so, you know, That's right. I, I sell a couple of bottle, little crack and all that, make a little money. I mean, no joke, that, that, that room was full of pimps, prostitutes, and drug dealers. Yeah. No wonder I and felt, it was just. <laughs> I felt at home amongst them for some reason. <laughs> but there was that one kid who everyone bullied, but yeah. he wanted yeah, to be yeah, a yeah. part of it. Yep. And he, and he could barely talk, he stuttered, and he was in the lowest remedial classes in his school. And he played cash flow mm -hmm. and all. That's right. 
The lights went on. Didn't That's it? right. The lights went on, and when he was done, he didn't get out the rat race, but he finished to gain positive cash yeah. flow. Yeah. He told his mother, take me out of special ed. I want to be in mainstream yeah. school. And then that next day, the mother came and bought a cash flow game. And that family played ever since then. Yeah. And that child was not the same yeah. kid every single day. He did not want to read the same books he was reading. He wanted to be challenged at a new level. Yeah. And uh, I, it, I, I get choked up just thinking about this kid and, and this family and how cash flow has t just changed their life. And if it just changed one family's life, my, my time there was worth it. Yeah. But it, it changed many, but that one family stuck with me. But you, you took it even further because you mm -hmm. said, the kids can't change unless the parents change. That's correct. Mm -hmm. So then Trina went in there and she had all the parents That's of these correct. kids who were choosing to be drug dealers and pimps mm -hmm. and prostitutes. She brought the parents in to change the kids, right? That's correct. The parents came in and we taught them financial education. And Robert, you don't remember this, but a team came in. Anita, Kelly, they all came in once from, a from week. From the Rich Dad Company. From the, from the Rich Dad Company and taught us at the Boys and Girls Club. And some of those parents I hired as staff members to give them cash flow to afford silver every week. Yeah. So at lunchtime every day, it was who's going to go get silver? Because the, um, goal, the goal was to buy so many silver coins that's per correct. month? Or? Per, per week. Per week. And so these are parents that were live barely, not, they no had, jobs. They had Seven, no, eight dollars per hour. Yeah, and at the end of the month they were out of money. They were out of money. Yeah. But, but we were buying silver every single week. We were buying silver, we were yeah. buying silver every single week on 40th Street in Camelback, and we would take our lunch break and one person would leave, because everyone could leave at the same time. There'd be no, no supervision for the kids. <laughs> and I would stay, and they, would, they couldn't wait to go see Robert, our friend Robert there, um, who sold the silver. It was $11 an ounce at that time. And we watched the market every single day, and it, it, just, it just completely altered our, our lives and, and changed our perspective on investing, and, and it really gave kids a hope. And those kids who were pimps, prostitutes, and drug dealers, they literally wanted to put their colors down and go to real estate school. <laughs> and then also, didn't you, the parents start buying vending machines? Or oh yes, yes, yes. And so we wanted to start these micro businesses. And so from all these sil all this silver collected, we took a picture. We had over 200 ounces after two or three wow. years. Well exceed, exceeded your goal. We well yeah. exceeded our goal. Yeah. We started an LLC called the Silver <laughs> Million. We wanted to start our first million with just silver, and we so wanted had wanted to buy vendor machines to create more cash flow to buy more silver. Right. I got it. And so that's really the joy of the work. Like I said, it's business of the 21st century is about being generous mm -hmm. while being doing business in the industrial age. It's about being greedy. So that's why, you know, very happy Trina comes into our company every Tuesday because we study. Because yes. study is our future. Absolutely. I'm so, honored. So anyway, thank you all for listening. Final thank words, you. Kim? Um, yeah, so my, my final word is, you know, we've been talking a lot about network marketing, and one of the beauties of network marketing is the support group and the mentoring right. and the coaching that That's happens. Right. And um, Robert and I have coaches for all sorts of things, coaches for fitness, coaches for business, coaches for investing, um, because it's, when it's just mm -hmm. me trying to figure something out, I need, I need a coach. Absolutely. So um, the value of the Rich Dad Coaching is similar in, in what you're talking about with the support group of network marketing is somebody that's there and I think the most important thing that a rich dad coach does is hold you accountable to do what you say you're going to do so if your goal is this week to do ABC they're going to say did you do ABC yes or no if no why didn't you do it and really kind of walk you through that and make you, make sure that you handle those steps mm -hmm. that you need to handle to be accountable to yourself to have the success and get your goals that you want so mm -hmm. I think it's a very valuable, I know it's a very, very valuable part of the Rich Dad Company. So Trina, final words, and thanks for being a friend for all these years. Absolutely, uh, it's, it's been an honor you. and a privilege, and I feel like a kid in a candy store. This is my financial church, is what I tell people. I go to church on Sundays, <laughs> I come to Tuesday as my financial church, and Robert is uh, my preacher. <laughs> He's very prophetic, too. It's, he, it's just amazing. I've had the time of my life. But I always tell people that, you know, network marketing isn't perfect. It's just better. And like any other company out there, you know, you, there's, not so, there's, some ones, there's some network marketing companies out there that are not so good. That's why it's extremely important to have mentors and great coaches because then they can help you break down the compensation plan, help you uh, make realistic goals Goal setting is huge and help you to cognitively set out your plan. Overcome and your fears overcome and doubts. Overcome your fears and doubts. Learn how to read annual reports. Learn how to 
be a professional in this business. It's not a deal, it's not a hobby, it's not a gimmick, it's not a, it's none of that. It is a real business that's a liable, viable, willable asset that could perpetuate and pay you for the rest of your lives and your children's children for the rest of their lives. And what I want to say is that the most important thing about business is not about how much money you make, but how many people you serve. So anyway, that's why we're in the business we're in. We're in. We have enough money, but there's a lot more people to serve. So thank you all for listening. Thank you. Thank you.